546 and let's stand and sing Love Lifted Me. Page 546 tonight. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deep we stayed within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters lifted me now sing 
see you tonight. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. And it's good to be here tonight. Hope and pray you've been exciting and looking forward to the evening service tonight. We are so glad that you're here. Just a couple of people need to remember in prayer tonight if we can. Uh, let's remember um, Gavin's great-grandmother, our son-in-law's great-grandmother tonight in prayer. Uh, I don't even really know her name. We all know her as Mama Doodle. That's all that we know. Amen. And uh, so uh, pray for her if you wouldn't mind. She is really just at the point of death and things. And Mary Beth and Gavin and them had already turned around and went home, started home, and now they're turning around and coming back. And so uh, uh, so really pray for them if you wouldn't mind. And then also we want you to remember Brother Delbert's story in your prayers tonight. Uh, let's really remember him in prayer. And uh, they haven't given him much time at all. So we would like you to pray for him tonight. Amen. But we're glad that you're here. Good to have Brother Williams with us tonight. He's going to be singing tonight here in just a few few minutes and so I know you're going to be excited about that. I've just, I've never heard him, I don't guess. And so we're excited about this. And so I hope and pray that you'll be praying for him. And of course, pray for Brother Roy as he preaches tonight. Yeah. And listen, yeah, tonight, Lord. listen, we're going to have a great time together. We've got a great fellowship plan. I hope and pray you'll stay around for that. But let's pray together and let's ask God's blessings on our time together. Heavenly Father, tonight we thank you, yeah, Lord, for the great day. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for this time together. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have tonight to call upon your name, dear Lord. We ask God tonight you'd work in our life in a very special way. We ask God tonight you'll do yeah. uh, things, Lord, in this building Lord. tonight, God, that only you can. Father, there are so many needs tonight here, and Lord, so many needs outside of here. God, we trust you for all things. Be with Brother Williams, he sings tonight. Be with Brother Roy, as he preaches tonight. Be with the yeah. choir as they sing. Lord, I pray that when we leave this place, God, we'll leave in courage. Lord, with the things that we hear and the things that we see. And Father, I just pray tonight you'll help us just to give you the praise and the glory and honor for all that you do. But we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And you all can be seated.
let's get a hymn book. Let's turn to Amazing Grace. Amen. 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 We've not sang it in a while. Page 330 in your hymn book. Let's all stand and sing page 330. Here we go. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved. Amen. Glory to God. I tell you what, what a blessing again it is to be in the house of the Lord. Just a couple of announcements tonight. 
And then we'll take our offering, and then we're going to have Brother Dale Williams singing for us tonight, right before Brother Roy comes to preach. And uh, again, I'm excited to hear this. I've never heard him preach. Now, he and I, we share a friend together, Daniel Holder. Yeah, uh, 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 he and I, we shared Daniel. We, we didn't, know, well, he didn't know that, but I knew that probably. But, uh, um, but uh, Daniel, I used to work for Daniel and Bill a number of years ago. And, and uh, really, honestly, two very fine gentlemen, very fine gentlemen. And uh, they were always very good to me. And, and Daniel even lent us his property up on the creek up there to, for our daughter to have her outdoor wedding on. I mean, yeah, it was very nice of him to do that. And uh, but him and Noki, they've always been very, very dear people, and we appreciate it, but excited to hear him. Just a couple of things. Like I said, don't forget tonight, right after church, don't leave. Please don't leave. We have plenty of food down in the fellowship hall and things, and so listen, I uh, hope you all got your sombreros ready to go tonight, and uh, we ha we'll have everything but the mariachi band down there tonight, I promise you that, amen. And uh, so uh, listen, we hope and pray you'll stay tonight. And uh, so uh, we'll have a good time. But listen, don't rush off. You say, well, I don't want anything to eat. Well, listen, don't rush off. Go down and spend some time with your church family. And listen, let's, let's, uh, let's fellowship one with another tonight and spend some time together. And things, we we'll hope you'll do that. And so, uh, but do go down the fellowship hall right after the services tonight. And also tonight, again, <clears throat> we're going to be clearing out the B dollars um, uh, in, for the Bibles in the back tonight. And to my surprise, we've probably got a boatload of them things that come in today. And uh, so we're going to be turning them in probably tomorrow, Tuesday morning and things. And so we should be really right over $1,300 some dollars on 1300 brand new Bibles. Amen. Isn't that a blessing? And so, uh, you know, the good part about it is we want to be sure and get the Word of God into the hands of teenagers. Uh, but we want to get the Word of God into their hearts. That's what we want. Amen. And because that's the only thing that's going to change America. And so, uh, but listen, if you want to give to that tonight, it's back there. Of course, it's back there all the time. And so uh, just really grateful, thankful to you for all that you have done, helping us collect dollar bills to have a B on them uh, and things. And so um, I appreciate that so very, very much. And, of course, uh, don't forget about the church library, of course. And then also one other announcement here. Uh, if you are part of the Oakland Avenue Baptist Church Mighty Oaks group, all right, and that is everybody that is 55 years and older, amen. Uh, so uh, listen, they're going to uh, they're going to go eating and shopping, amen. So uh, don't forget about that Thursday, April the 25th, and uh, they're going to be shopping and they're going to be eating at Riverfront Restaurant in Kingsport and McCoy's Market and things. And so uh, the van will be leaving here at the church at 11.30, so get here a little early and get your spot on the van. If you're a part of that group and things, we appreciate Brother Danny and Sister Pat Ellswick taking care of that group and things. We appreciate them so very, very much. And uh, so uh, we appreciate our, our elderly folk and older folk in our church. And so they're, listen, they're a very important part of the church. And uh, so uh, we appreciate them so very, very much. Amen. Well, let's get a couple of ushers tonight to come. Let's get our offering taken care of tonight. <clears throat> And again, right after um, the offering tonight, Brother Williams, you just want to make your way on up and get set in uh, and things. And so uh, that way you'll be ready to go. And then right after that, Brother Roy will be preaching tonight. And I know that uh, you'll be excited about that, all right? And so, uh, again, thank you so much for what you're giving. Amen. But Brother Boyd, will you lead us in prayer tonight? Amen.
I better say one word, make sure my microphone's on. I normally don't talk, and I'm not going to talk tonight. Hear the cries of the shackle from the onset of time for the chains of defeat. There's no There no one worthy to set us free. And the crying is still as the chorus rings out. The shackles released from their
day that he was passing this way. I'm ready should he come this hour. I want a fresh glimpse of Jesus again and again. I'm going out on a limb for him. A woman one day had pressed through the crowd for Jesus was the one she came to see. And for 12 long years she was sick and no physician was able to cure her disease. But when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment that day, that hour she was then made whole. She made an effort of faith, so I guess you could say she went out on a limb for him. I'm going out on a limb for him today. I'm going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to touch his garment, going to call out his name. Gonna press through the crowd and never be the same. I heard it today that he was passing this way. I'm ready should he come this hour. I want a fresh glimpse of Jesus again and again. I'm going out on a limb for him. I'm going out on a limb for him today. I'm gonna do whatever it takes. Be the same. I heard it today that he was passing this way. I'm ready should he come this hour. I want a fresh glimpse of Jesus. Can and can I'm going out on a limb, out on a limb, out on a limb for I'll never forget what happened at the church of Caldwell Springs. I went there with my mother, that's the way things used to be. Many times she shared the story of Jesus Christ with me. That Sunday night my life changed when the Savior spoke to me. I remember when it happened, it happened long ago. The power of God came on me, felt like lightning through my soul. Oh, what a celebration that started on that night. I remember when it happened, Jesus came into my he got the call to battle in 1943. They sent him far away to a beach in Normandy. He flew a glider in Market Garden. He drove the jeep to the Battle of the Bulge. While he lay there in a foxhole, he talked to his savior above. I remember when On me felt like lightning through my soul. Oh, what a celebration that started on that night. I remember when it happened. Jesus came into my life. Now when I get to heaven, the place I long to be, I'll see the rock of ages and loved ones dear to me. The things in life I question, he will answer on that day. When the roll is called up yonder, these words again I'll say. I remember when it happened, it happened long ago. The power of God came on me, felt like lightning through my soul. Oh, what a celebration that started on that night. I remember when it happened, Jesus came into my I remember when it happened, Jesus.
Let me tell you the story of that last song. That was his dad. It was a story about his dad getting saved. Any of you ever been to Poplar Grove Baptist Church? That's the last church, I think. Last Baptist. Baptist. (laughs) (laughs) On uh, Stony Creek. I know uh, back in 1972, uh, I was called a fool. I was crazy. I could have been at the head of Stony Creek pastoring a church of over 200 people, but God called me at the dead end street to East Park Baptist Church with 20 people, and they'd had so many splits it looked like a splinter. (laughs) But I'm glad that I went God's direction, and I sure enjoyed these years. Uh, Take your Bible tonight, two scriptures, John chapter 14 and Acts chapter number one. John chapter 14 and Acts chapter one. Or did I guess the message is over the years and the different ones from John chapter 14. But listen to these words afresh and anew tonight. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. And Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how canst we know the way? And Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man come unto the Father but by me. Now Acts chapter 1. In verse number one through verse number nine. The former treasures have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Notice what he began to do, right? Until the day in which he was taken up and that he through the Holy Ghost hath given commandments who the apostles whom he hath chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible truths being seen of then 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God and being assembled together with them, commanded them, that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, uh, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the season which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and the other most parts of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. I want to speak to you a few moments on five things Jesus left the church to do. Five things 
that Jesus left the church to do. And I pray tonight that we'll understand we've got a lot of, to do, and I hope you recognize we've probably got a short time to do it. So if we're going to do what the Lord left us to, I think we better get busy getting at it, don't you? Well, first of all, he has left the church an unfinished task. What is that unfinished task? What was Jesus all about when he was down here? Coming to me, I'll forgive you, I'll save you, trust me, believe upon me. While he walked here upon the earth, what was he doing? He was calling lost people unto himself. Now, he said, I'm, uh, uh, John chapter 14, I've come, I've given my life, I'm going back to heaven, and I give you this truth, there's only one way that you can come to me, it's through me. There's only way you can get to the Father, I am that only way. And then we come here to the book of Acts. He's getting ready to go back to heaven. He's standing on the Mount of Olives. How many of you know when he comes back where he's coming to? He's coming to the Mount of Olives. There that day, standing on the Mount of Olives, I've stood there 14 times as I've took 15, 14 trips to the Holy Land. And he, he was there on the Mount of Olives with his disciples and followers. And now, I, I believe all of a sudden, he just started lifting up. All of a sudden, he began to withdraw from the earth. And when he began to withdraw, you know what happened, don't you? Their eyes were upon him. And he descended into the Shekinah glory cloud of God the Father. But you know what happened? There was a tab. Say, this same Jesus is coming in like manner. But before he left, in those two texts that we've read, he's given us this unfinished task. He didn't finish what he came for, but he left it to the church. He left it to you and I, and it should be the cry of evangelism. The cry of evangelism. What is the church lost today? It's lost its cry for evangelism. I don't know about you. It's lost people here in the auditorium this morning who heard the word of God and heard the truth of God and walked out lost. I don't know what it does to you but it breaks my heart. Amen, it disturbs me. Uh, sometimes it makes me weary of, 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 of sinners can come to the house of God and walk out lost. I don't believe it's the will of God that they die in their sins. I believe it's the will of God that be saved. Amen. But I believe it's the will of God the church have so much Christ and so much love and so much glory of God that those sinners' minds and hearts will be illuminated to the truth. How many of you remember the day and time that you watched Billy Graham crusades? How many remember those days? How many of you remember in the invitation seeing thousands coming? How many can uh, reflect back to tent crusades and, and citywide crusades? How many can re reflect back to 1976 at, at uh, uh, the, what's the, uh, up at Science Hill, uh, uh, the big arena there? Freedom Hall, Freedom Hall. Can you remember there uh, when James Robertson came to town, a young man that had God on him, had the power of God. I mean, he had the anointing of God. But you know, the devil can confuse those that are walking in the power of God if we don't watch it. And we can fall away from the truth and fall into error. But I remember in those crusades, uh, uh, the thousands of people and the assembled there and packed Freedom Hall out. I wonder how many, I don't know, I don't believe we could even get a fourth of Freedom Hall today. I don't care who you call probably to preach in Freedom Hall. That's how far we've drifted away from fulfilling the great commission that the Lord gave. How many of you know the Lord gave the church a commission? It's called the Great Commission. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 21. The Great Commission. That commission steals God's commission. That commission is go preach the gospel. That mission is to go win the loss. Baptize them. Part of the church. Teach them and train them to go out and win others. How many of you know this church and every church is going to die if we don't start reproducing? We talk about the decrease in our churches today. But if we don't get back to fulfilling 
the task that the Lord has left us to evangelize, to evangelize the lost, uh, uh, to reach out into those. Uh, the fact of Pew research today, only 2% of the people, 2% of the people that said in the American church today has led a soul personally to the Lord. That should make every one of us weep tonight. I remember my first soul. I remember my first going out and knocking on doors. You know what had happened to me before I'd go out and knock on doors? There was a Presbyterian preacher had to make me mad. It's not a Baptist preacher. How many of you know who I'm called, talking about? Dr. James D. Kennedy. Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church in Coral Ridge, Florida. My pastor, Brother John Gilbert, took me to a preacher's conference down in Columbia, South Carolina. And that night, Dr. James D. Kennedy, Presbyterian ain't supposed to talk like this. He said, you know what's wrong with most of you here tonight? You're a bunch of yellow-bellied characters. Now, would you expect a Presbyterian to say that? Most of you wouldn't expect a Baptist. But he, and I had just got saved. I hadn't been saved long. And, and all, God hadn't called me to preach or nothing yet. And I'm gonna tell you something, when he said you ain't nothing but a yellow belly carrot, you're sitting back there with a yellow streak up your back. In my mind, I said, I'd like to have you behind the church for about five minutes. <laughs> ain't nobody never called me a yellow belly carrot. I've just been saved out of a very, very rough life. But I tell you what he did, he made me so mad before he got through about preaching about soul winning. Can you imagine the Presbyterian church out there in this soul winning effort and not believing in and, uh, uh, that ever the body is predestined? Huh? But I came back from that conference on Thursday night, you know who showed up at visitation? Roy Yelton. You know who they placed me with? Delmer Lowe to go on visitation. They gave us about oh, five or six cards to go visit that night. Delmer and I got in the car. Delmer was driving. We went to every one of those houses, knocked on the door, and we couldn't find one person home. We're coming back down the Kingsport Highway to come to Oak. Uh, Grove Baptist Church. I said, Delmer, pull up there in that mobile home uh, park. I got to tell somebody about Jesus tonight. He pulled up there and we pulled up and we got out and we walked up to the first mobile home there. I knocked on the door. There was a young lady came to the door and I just blooded out. I didn't know anything except God saved me and what he'd done for me. She come to the door and I just blunted out. I said, are you saved? Do you know Jesus as Lord and Savior? She said, oh yes, I really do. I know that Christ saved me and I know them as my Lord and Savior, but my husband's lost. Would you please come in here and talk to him? You say, what did you do, preacher? I just went in there and told him what God done for me. Is that not what a witness is? And he got saved that night. You know where that man's at tonight? He's a deacon in Pilgrim Baptist Church uh, over off of Muddy Creek Road. Hey, what would happen tonight if you just started going telling what the Lord had done for you? Will you say, Brother Roy, I have not been to Soul Winning Class 101 or 102 or 103. How about, just, are you saved? I wonder tonight, if it wouldn't be good, we started walk, open this pulpit up every service and let somebody come tell their story. A good preacher friend of mine was here on Tuesday night when RSM was here, Keith Watkins, Mount Pleasant Baptist Church over in Weaverville, North Carolina. Keith was a drug addict and all. He pastors a church today of about 700 people, souls being saved, the power of God on it. And old Keith, he went over to every one of them boys and said, tell me your story, tell me your story, tell me your story. I stood there and listened to them men tell the story of where they was at and how they got saved. What's your story tonight? 
How many of you believe us? Would you, how long has it been since you told your kids your story? How long has it been since you told your neighbor your story? Huh? Don't you believe we got an unfinished task? Evangelize. That ought to be the cry of the church. Who's the only one can give us that burden? God. But you know something? You can walk as close to God as you want to. How many of believe that? You can walk as close to God as you want to. He said, draw near to me and I'll what? Now, here's the thing about it. Do we have that desire? Do we have that, do we, do we hunger? Oh, God, give me that burden. God, give me that vision. God, give me that heart. How many of you believe God answers prayers? Would it be good tonight we pray, God, give me that burden. God, give me that vision. God, give me that heart to reach this broken and hurting world. The second thing that the Lord has given us is an unchanging message. How many of you know God's not changed? How many of you know God's word's not changed? I found this in my study a few days ago. Guess when that Bible was printed? 18 and 81. 18 and 81, I got to going through it and looking at it, some things and all, and I saw the uh, Jose, Josefina uh, Shader uh, died April 19 and 10. It was wrote in here. Some little things and notes is all wrote in there. It's in, the, it's in Roman numerals. It's, uh, I, I got to go and find one before I can find 10. <laughs> no, I remember X is 10. That's how old it is and all. But you know one thing about this Bible? It's got the same words in it. This one's God. God's word has not changed. God's word has not changed. We've got the same message. I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man come to the Father except by me. The word of God is still teaching that God is holy and righteous and perfect. The word of God is teaching that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. The, God's got the good news and God's got the bad news and God's got the whole news and God's got the whole truth and he's got the story from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelations 22, 21. That is God's story in his book and it hasn't changed. He gave, left us an unchanging message. He left us the truth and he wants us to go out and, and give it out, give it out. Faith cometh by what? Hearing by the word of God. How many of you believe we all need some strength? You get it, you get it from the word. You get it as you walk with faith. You walk in the Old Testament, and you've seen what God's done in the past and God has not changed and so what can I do? I can expect God still to do miracles. Hey, listen to me, the age of miracles is not over with. The greatest miracle you'll ever see is when you see a sinner give his life to Jesus Christ and get saved. That's the biggest miracle that you'll ever see. And by the way, while I just thought about it, and I forgot to announce it this morning, forgot to announce this evening, we're going to have communion next Sunday. Next Sunday we're having communion. And he said, as often as you do this, do it in what? Remember to me. Remember God said it then, God's saying it now, and God will say it tomorrow, and it will never change. Aren't you glad that God's an unchanging God? I've, I've got in trouble, but I'll probably get in trouble right now again. I know that God ain't a woman. You say, why? He's never changed his mind. <laughs> hey, men, you better be careful about coming in one night and thinking the bed's there and dive in the bed not knowing what is there because your wife might have moved the furniture today. <laughs> Amen. I'm happy with the furniture and it don't ever have to be moved. Aren't you glad men and women ain't alike? Huh? But God does not change. His word does not change. Number three, he's given us an unlimited power. 
Look at verse number eight in our text in Acts chapter one. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in, in Judea and in a, to the uttermost power of the earth. God power. This word here is dumenos, God power. There's no power that can contend with God power. It's all powerful. It's God power. God has left us that power. God has given us that power. And God wants us to use that power for his glory. But how many of you know your power can get detoured? I remember old Vance Havner talking about when he was a kid growing up over the foot hills of North Carolina. He said, we had the water mill and sometimes the mill could not grind mill. You know why? There wasn't no power to turn the big water wheel. What had happened? Upstream, a storm may have come and where they had diverted the, the, the water to come in down into the trough, it would come down and, and pour down over the big wheel at the mill. It had got filled up with rubbish. It got filled up with leaves. And there was no water coming through to turn the big wheel. And the mill could not grind weed and corn and all of the things and make the flour. I wonder if the church doesn't need to go upstream tonight and clean a lot of trash out of our lives. I wonder tonight if we ain't diverted the power of God by the unconfessed sin that's in our lives. And we've not trusted and obeyed the Lord and did the will of God. How many of you, how many of you would rather have a dune buggy out in the parking lot tonight or a $500,000 Rolls Royce. How many of you want the dune buggy? You ain't heard the rest of the story as Paul Harvey said. That Rolls Royce is sitting out there, but it don't have no battery. But that dune buggy has a battery. If I want to get home without walking, which one am I going to take? What are you trying to get across? God's trying to get the point across. All of our beautiful buildings, our beautiful singing, our beautiful organization, and all of the things that we've got, if it has not the anointing of God upon it, it ain't going to get us to where we ought to be. He's lift us with an unlimited power. And then he's left us with an unspeakable and unshakable testimony. It's called his word. Amen. Down through the ages, they've tried to burn it. They've tried to destroy it. They've tried to get rid of it every way that they know how. But I read a little story sometime that just really burning my heart and I have never got over it. There was a man that walked into a, a blacksmith's shop one day and he said to the blacksmith, what is all of that pile of metal over there in the corner? He said, well, that's a pile of hammers that this old anvil has wore out over 50 years. And the preacher used it as an illustration. This is the word of God that's still standing while there have been many things fell in the trash unworthy and they still have not put it out of existence. The word of the living God. There's comfort in here, but there's yet disturbance in here. This book comforts me. This book gives me great hope. This book gives me great inspiration. But this book disturbs me many times too. 
I told you I think it's Wednesday night. I just sat at my desk in my study one day last week and I just started reading through the book of Job. And you know, Job's friends, they came to Job and they said, if you hadn't been such a big disobedience to God, all this wouldn't have happened to you. But I've read the conversation with Job and God and the devil. Job was the best man in the land. Job was a man that feared God and hated evil. Job was this rich man, but yet he loved God with all of his heart and his soul and his mind. And I sat there and I read through all of this of Job. I I read this of when that here that his animals. How many of you know in that day and time what a camel was worth to our day and time today? A new Mercedes. How would you like to have 500 Mercedes? I'm just trying to tell you this man who he was in Job and he had all these goats and he had all, he was the wealthiest man, the most blessed man. But one day, everything that is God, his 10 children are killed. And Job's wife comes and says, why don't you turn God and give up? And Job said, you speak as a foolish woman. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be his name. God giveth and God taketh away. And you know what God spoke to my heart about? And it really, it really got a hold of me. Job did not serve God for what God could do for him. He served God because he knew who God was. What might happen tonight if you and I begin to have such a relationship and fellowship and communion with God as Job did? Psalms chapter 27. God said, seek ye my face. And the psalmist said, Lord, thy face I will seek. How many of you are listening? How many got your spiritual antenna up just for a moment? You know what most every one of us in this building night seek? We seek God's blessings. We seek his hand. We seek what God can do for us. Is not our prayer life something like this? Give me, 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 do, 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 do. Is that sound like modern day Christian's prayer life? But what did God say to the psalmist? Seek my what? And the psalmist said, thy face, Lord, I will seek. You know what seeking the face of God means? Seeking his will being in his will no matter what. You know the will of God is the most best place to be on the face of the earth. And listen to me, if you are in his will, I promise you all of your necessities will be met by God. Maybe you'd like to turn over and read the last chapter in Job. The life 42 and verse three and Job says there ain't nothing my God can't do. You know what? Job was doubled in everything he had. And guess how many of you know this? Miss Job had to crave ice cream and pickles 10 more times. Don't sit there and look at me. Go read the book. He gave him 10 more children. I believe I'm just going to stick with God. I just believe that I'm going to cling on by grace and hope and faith. I just believe I'm going to lay a hold of the truth. And by the way, if you'll ever lay a hold of truth and hope, you'll never go under. He'll to sustain you and it'll take you through. Finally, he's given us an unfailing promise. You got your Bible maybe still open there to Acts chapter one, verse 10. I turn back and look at, look at, this, look at this unfailing promise. Acts chapter number one, verse number 10. And while they looked up steadfastly towards heaven 
As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand in your gaze and up into heaven? This same Jesus shall come in like manner as you have seen him go. He's given us what? An unfailing promise. He's coming. He's coming. Ready or not. Did you ever play hide and go see? Ready or not, I'm what? By the way, ready or not, he's coming one day. I believe in the rapture. I'm premillennialist. I believe the church is going to be snatched out of here before the great tribulation. And folks, let me ask you something. Are you seeing signs? The signs are not for the revelation. The signs are, uh, uh, not, the signs are not for the rapture. They're for the revelation. But if you see the signs for the revelation, don't you believe the rapture is very close? I'm seeing what's taking place in the world in this very moment. And all of it is pointing to the coming of my Lord. He comes in two advents. He comes first of all for the church. The church is not going in or through or no part of the great tribulation. And there's no part rapture, half rapture or or mid rapture. If the trump of God sounds tonight, every saved person where you're in fellowship or not in fellowship with God, you're going. You might meet him ashamed, but you're going. And we're going to go be with the Lord in heaven. And there's two things that's going to take place in heaven while the great tribulation is taking place here upon earth. The judgment seat of Christ. How many of you know we're going to the Bema seat before we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb? You say, preacher, I don't understand nothing you're talking about. Won't you get in the Bible and find out what I'm talking about? Huh? Huh? I tell you what, can I say it one more time? This book is better than watching Who Shot John. Huh? If you're getting this book, here here to teach you the fullness of the joy of life. I, I really count myself a happy, joyful person. I do. Well, you say, bless God, preacher, I don't. Well, that's the reason you look like you've been deal pickle and deal pickle juice. Start enjoying it. How many of you know God did not save you to make you miserable? Oh, Lord. God's dead. Have you seen how some of you frown sometimes? Huh? You know what that's called? Drowsiness. You know drowsiness comes right before you pass out. Drowsiness comes right before you lose touch of reality. You say, Brother Roy, have you got a word for us tonight? Yeah. When you come to church, you ought to get a shock or a charge. (laughs) He's coming. You believe it? Let's bow our heads in prayer. I hope we'll take this truth tonight. I hope that we'll wake up out of our drowsiness and spiritual apathy and complacency and indifference. And I pray that we'll get a God-given vision and a, I'm just, we're not going to sing Bobby. Get a God-given vision and a, get a holy heartburn, desire to have a closer walk with the Lord, desire to make an impact in this world. How many of you maybe would say tonight, Pastor, will you pray for me that I'll start telling my story of 
of God's saving grace and what God did for me. How many raise their hands and say, I need, to, I need to start telling that story. None of you don't want to tell it? Well, have you got it if you don't want to tell it? Hey, so, think about it. If you don't want to go tell the story, are you saved? When God saved me, he gave me the desire to tell the story of the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Do you have a witness of the Holy Spirit of God and the Lord Jesus Christ in your life? If you don't want to go tell that story, I'm not being mean, people. I'm trying to help us to realize the Lord is coming back and we need to be ready. Amen. We need to be ready. Will you realize the word of God is something that I need to spend time learning and growing and desiring and hungering? Blessed are they to hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If the trump of God sounds in the next five minutes, are you going? Do you have that assurance? If I ask this congregation tonight, is the Lord good? We'd say he's good all the time. If he's good enough all the time, how many of you believe he's good enough to go speak to the world about? To speak to your family and your friends and your neighbors and your loved ones? Is he good? Let's go share him. The Passover lamb In the Passover lamb supper, it was to be shared with others. And that Passover is a great picture of our salvation. And this great salvation is worthy to be shared with our families and friends and neighbors and pray that God will give us a burden and God will give us a vision. Let's stand to our feet with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. As the sweet Holy Spirit of God walks among us and goes to individual hearts and speak, how many can honestly, judgmental, truthfully examination of your own heart can raise your hand and say, I just don't know about Jesus. I know him as my personal Lord and my Savior. I can raise my hand before God with peace that I know, that I know this Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. You say, Pastor, I really need to get this thing settled. I need to know in whom I have believed and whom I have trusted. God doesn't want you to live with doubt and you can never have victory in your Christian life until you get it settled. I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. Is there one any word say, Pastor, that's me, pray for me. How many would say, Pastor, God really has rung my bell tonight and spoke to my heart about how unconcerned I am about my family and about my friends and my neighbors and the people that I come in contact with today. Would you pray with me, Pastor, that I'll get a burden and I'll get a heart to pray for them and desire to see them come to the saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of God's people say, Pastor, I want to be there. I want to be burdened about my family, my friends, and my neighbors. 
90% of this church seems to have no vision, no burden. Oh God. Oh God, would you speak to our hearts tonight? Would you have us to realize that all tears are not wiped away until after the great white throne judgment? And God, could it be that it's that way? I don't understand the final state of eternity, Lord, of our family and our friends and all. As John David preached the message on hell, then it'll be wiped away from our memory. <laughs> Lord, I wonder in this congregation tonight if we were lost without God. I knew the condition with inside the churches in our land that they really don't have a heart and they really don't have a vision and they really don't have a brokenness about those lost without the Savior. God, would you walk the dark hills this week and the valleys of our hearts and speak to them about how easy God it is to get cold and indifferent. How easy it is, God, to leave our first love. And how easy, God, it is to get in a state of apathy and complacency. I'm going to heaven, and it really don't matter about others. God, please, don't never let me get like that. Please, God. God, my heart aches tonight for revival and for souls, but I can't, God, I cannot, and you cannot even make anybody until they have a desire. You said you would give us the desire of our heart, God. And I know people don't want to hear this, and people don't want to hear the alarm clock. They'd like to take the alarm clock and they'd like to throw it against the wall and burst it because they don't want to be awakened from where they're at. But God awakened this church to our sleepiness and our drowsiness and our unconcern. And Lord, bless the fellowship and bless the food. In Jesus' name, amen. Fellowship.